Hey, what's going on YouTube? First of all, thank you for clicking on this video. Um, if you are new to the channel or if you have been here before, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently on this channel. Making a change just kind of help myself stay more consistent, help myself accountable. So what we're gonna be doing going forward is just giving advice. Um, I get asked a lot of questions on a daily basis about you know, different type of lenses people should buy, how to shoot certain different things, so on and so forth. So this channel is just gonna be just me sitting on here and just giving you advice on how I kind of came up and started my journey in this production business, getting myself from starting in 2020 to now making over 100K a year um, on a consistent basis. So for me, I've always loved giving back and just sharing knowledge to help other people come up and do you know what I've been able to do since you know I started. All right, so let's stop wasting time. Let's get into the question of today's topic, and that is: If I was a filmmaker getting started today, brand new, what lens would I buy to get started? Now, this is always typically a loaded question because it really all depends on what you're shooting and your style of shooting. So, before I go into the answers, I'm gonna just go ahead and share with you guys what I bought when I first got started, and that was a 35 millimeter prime lens shooting mainly fitness videos. I didn't really know what prime lens was. I didn't really know about cameras in general when I first got started. So for me, I was in a gym setting and another fellow trainer in the gym had a camera and lens combination. And I saw the videos that he was producing and I liked it. Uh, you know, I asked him for some advice. He said he went with a, I think he had a A6400 and he bought a 35 millimeter prime lens. So I was like, dope. I want that same exact look that you're, you're getting. So I pretty much just went to the store and proceeded to copy whatever he bought, basically. I ended up buying an A6000 and a 35 millimeter prime lens, not knowing what I was getting myself into. Prime meaning that you can't zoom in or out. Didn't know that at the time. But the 35 millimeter did kind of get me by for a little while, um, especially shooting with gym videos. The quality of videos are really great. Love the lens, love the camera setup was getting really good feedback from other people that were watching the videos, so on and so forth. Shortly after that, I upgraded the camera body to an A7 III, then upgraded the lens. I bought a 24 to 105 G lens, F4, and that was the combination that pretty much kick-started my whole production career and wanted me to get out of the fitness industry and into the production industry. And that was the lens that pretty much got me started from for, for a whole year. Um, so now fast forward, people are starting to reach out to me to come and shoot videos for them. 24 to 105 lens was versatile enough of a wide range of focal lengths. I got 24 mil, which was wide enough to get, you know, a really good sense of the scene that I was shooting in. And the 105 was tight enough to get really, really cool detail shots. And I was able to make it look like I had multiple different lenses on a single shoot because I was just able to zoom in and out of different type of focal lengths. But before I definitively say that that's the lens that you should buy straight off the bat, the my favorite lens that I currently use till this day is the 50 millimeter F 1.4 G Master lens. Now I love this lens so much that I bought two of them. This is the 50 millimeter F 1.4 version. And I'm currently shooting on the 50 millimeter F 1.2 version. And the reason why I love the 50 millimeter so much is because first of all, I love the prime look. I love how sharp it is. I love the, that you're able to stop down to a 1.4 or 1.2 aperture and just getting that really, really shallow depth of field, especially when you're separating your subject from the background. It's just something about it. It looks really, really cinematic. And that's the look that I prefer. So. Now, when I show up on a shoot, whether it be a wedding, an event, or anything of the sorts, the 50 millimeter is on the front of my camera, and it will be for pretty much 90 to 95 percent of the shoot. Now, although if I were getting started today, knowing what I know now, I would probably go with something like a 50 millimeter prime lens. But for someone that's just getting started, brand new into the industry, and you're just looking for something to help you get by for the foreseeable future until you're able to make enough money to invest back into your business to buy more gear. I would look at something like the 24 to 105, or if you have a little bit deeper pockets, go with something like a 24 to 70 G Master lens F 2.8. That lens is gonna put you in some better situations when it terms shooting in broad daylight, shooting in lower light, and things of that nature. The 24 to 105 is great, especially if you're shooting in broad daylight, fantastic lens. But if you're gonna find yourself shooting in a lot of low light type of situations, 
I would look to something like the 24 to 70 G Master lens because although the 24 to 105 is great and that focal length, that focal range is really, really helpful. When it comes to shooting in low light, that 4.0 aperture is not gonna be as great as a 24 to 70 G Master lens, obviously, because 2.8 is vastly different than a 4.0. But that's not to say that a 4.0 24 to 105 can't get you by, especially nowadays with the capabilities of these new cameras that can shoot in crazy low light situations. It can definitely get you by until you're ready to you know, upgrade and get yourself going. But if you're somebody that's shooting in broad daylight for most of the time, the 24 to 105 is gonna be something that you wanna go with because it's gonna be a lot cheaper and it's gonna be a lot lighter. And with that, $800 that you're saving, rather than going with something like a 24 to 70, you're able to start buying lights and things like that that you can take with you on shoots to give you a better quality of video shooting in low light if you're shooting with that lens. Because that's something that took me a while to grasp um, lighting and how important lighting was when you're shooting with these cameras. Because you can have the best setup in the world, but if your lighting sucks, then the video is going to be trash. And you're not going to, you know, your videos aren't going to look that appealing to clients and things like that. But like I said, if you're on broad daylight, it really doesn't matter. So to answer the question, finally, if I was getting started today, I would probably go with something like a 24 to 105 to get me by. Use that as my bread and butter until I'm able to start buying more lenses. And then I would jump right into just getting prime lenses and filling out my prime lens fleet. Just because, like I said, the look that prime lenses give you, I love it so much. Um, I would go with, you know start building up my prime toolkit from 24 to 35, 50, 85, 135, and so on and so forth. So that's it for me. I hope that answer helped some of you guys in trying to make some buying decisions on what you can go with to kick off your content creation journey. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comment section. I'm always down there you know, replying to you guys and make sure you like this video on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already because I'm gonna be doing more and more of these type of videos, helping you guys make decisions on what you should be buying and other things in terms of like editing, how to get clients, and things like that. So if you're interested in stuff like that, please subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.